might need more. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Here. Put it in.
exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King, King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. A blaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice! Let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of the God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me the unworthy among the Levites may pour into me his light unshadowed that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wipe clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of the Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace 
and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, The night shall be bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by the sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O holy, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wedded to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns 
forever and ever. Amen. Please extend your Please extinguish your candles and please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from darkness. God, call, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw, saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. 
And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. Wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, May those you have redeemed and un redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where's the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as Holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Uriah. Hence, people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by my, myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness.
Let us pray. O oh God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations as once you swore, Grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could heartily drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in 
let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what we have once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution, by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back. Like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place, and the hills be shaken. My love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, 
surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his ways and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the snow and the rain come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. We wait on the Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel? that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld. You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Have you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may also know where our length of days in life where light of the eyes and peace, who has found the place of wisdom, who has entered into her treasuries. The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all times and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dis dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We wait on the Lord who is our light in darkness. We wait on the Lord, who is our light in darkness. Let us pray. O oh God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name. Because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your iniquities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up. What had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
let us pray. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind you may render, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then, we have died with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Reverend Father, I bring you a message of great joy the message of Alleluia. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that might, they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I begin by wishing you a very happy Easter. I'm, I'm just kidding, okay? <laughs> I began to feel like everything I do has to be sung. I pray that your Easter will be filled with joy and with every blessing as well as the fullness of life in God that we celebrate on this special evening. Since late August, when I drive home to visit my mom, I always try to make a visit to my father's grave and also to my future grave. For it is important for me on these trips up north that I connect with a few important realities. The first connection is with dad himself and with the memories of him that surface in my mind and heart whenever I am at that place in particular. I suspect it is the same for all of you when you visit the graves of your loved ones on a Sunday afternoon or perhaps every day if that is what you do. Memories, thoughts, and new perspectives can open up as we stand there at their tombs. But what is most important for me is not the memories and the thoughts in themselves, but the relationship that I still have with my father. That is why I don't worry if I don't stay long at his tomb, because I don't have the feeling that I'm leaving him behind when I leave there. Imagine then what was going through the mind of Mary of Magdala when she left her home in the early hours of Easter Sunday morning to visit the tomb of Jesus. I'm sure that she was no different than the rest of us who visit the graves of our loved ones. She too had her memories of Jesus, her conversations with him, 
and the raw grief of the loss of his friendship upon his death. For Mary, she came to the tomb with little expectation but to sit in silence and be alone with her memories of the man who had changed her life, but who was now dead and gone. She once had a beautiful friendship with this man who showed her such great mercy, but now that he was dead, in her mind that friendship was over. When she arrived, she was shocked to see the tomb empty, and her first thoughts were that someone had broken into the tomb. The irony, of course, is that no one had broken into the tomb, but that Jesus had broken out of it. And because this happened, her life was about to begin all over again. On that first Easter Sunday morning, the amazing truth dawned on Mary of Magdala that Jesus, the man she loved, was alive and had overcome death. In this sense, Mary of Magdala was the first to experience the hope that all of us can have when we too visit the graves and tombs of our loved ones. Our relationship with our loved ones lives on because they live on. As St. Paul tells us in today's second reading, your lives are hidden with Christ in God. On that first Easter day, three lives would never be the same again. For Peter, John, and Mary, they were the first witnesses to know that Jesus had overcome death. And because he had, then he had overcome everything else as well. If Jesus was Lord over death, then Jesus was Lord over everything. Yet our faith in the resurrection is more than about life or death, even though this is a great part of it. It is about the fullness of life on both sides of the grave. Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of God's new project, not to snatch us away from earth to heaven, but to fill earth with the life of heaven. In everyday life, then, no one is without hope. If Christ is risen and we carry his spirit with us and within us, then no situation is hopeless. If God can bring life from death, then he can also give new hope to the sick, new joy to the sad, new comfort to the bereaved, new shelter to the refugee, new opportunities for the unemployed, new peace to the troubled in spirit, new meaning for those who are lost, new beginnings for those who have failed. For those who believe, none of these tombs can contain the force of life that bursts out of them once Christ is placed within them. All the resurrection accounts are different, and we cannot reconcile them with one another. In the account from Mark, which we read last night, three women came to the tomb. In the account from John, which we will hear on Easter morning, first it's Mary Magdalene, and then Peter and John go to the tomb. However, one of the things all the resurrection accounts have in common is that the stone was rolled back from the entrance to the tomb. Have you allowed a stone to prevent you from meeting the risen Christ? If you have a tomb of any sort in your life right now, invite the Lord to roll away the stone from that tomb and bring healing and new life. If he overcame death, he can overcome everything in ways we never imagined. That is why we rejoice today. 
because new hope and new life are possible. God has adopted each of us as his sons and daughters. What a wonderful privilege that is. So let the stones of your tombs be rolled away by Jesus and let your hearts be filled with new life in Christ. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, as St. Paul said, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are of this earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. Christ is alive today. And because he is alive, it is possible for each of us and those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith to be alive beyond the grave and for us on this side of the grave to be truly alive in Christ. Christus surrexit, surrexit sicut dixit alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen as he said. Alleluia. I invite the elect to come forward with their godparents, Anne France, Alexandra Hummel, Braylon Russ. I invite everyone to please rise. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Saint Michael, holy angels of God, Saint John the Baptist, Saint Joseph. St. Peter and St. Paul, St. Andrew, St. John, all you holy men and women pray for us, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Petra, Saint Felicity, Saint Agnes, Saint Gregory, Saint Augustine, all you holy men and women pray for us, Saint Athanasius. Saint Basil, 
Saint Francis, Saint Saint Dominic, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint John Vianney, Saint Catherine of Siena. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask the congregation to please be seated. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit and as he hung upon the cross gave forth water from his side along with blood and after his resurrection commanded his disciples go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor, squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who are buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
Elect of God, I now ask you to renounce sin and profess your faith in the almighty and living God. Anne, Alexandra, and Braylon, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Anne, Alexandra, and Braylon, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. Elect of God, I now ask each of you, with your godparents, to come to the font for baptism into new life. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> you can wipe off the order. <laughs> Thank you. Alexandra, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Braylon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alexandria and Braylon. You have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive this white garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Godparents, please come forward to give the newly baptized the light of Christ. Anne, Alexandria, and Braylon, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light. Please present the flames to them. And keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Congratulations to all of you.
Please rise. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, and I wish to hear you quite loudly, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author of prince and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us in his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
I invite everyone to please extinguish their candles and to please be seated. Let the candidates who are to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church come forward with their sponsors, Brandon Quibble and Joel Zylstra. Of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You come forward now, and in the presence of the, this community, I invite you to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, the sign and reality of the Church's unity. Brandon and Joel, I ask you, do you believe and profess all that the Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? I believe and profess all that the Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. Well, Brandon and Joel, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the union, unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that we have professed in the presence of his family. Anne, Alexandria, Braylon, Brandon, and Joel. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and have become members of Christ and his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Holy Spirit sent among us the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. And it will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. I invite the congregation to please stand. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought your ser these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, Send them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. and be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Alexandra, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.
Braylon, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Brandon, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Joel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Well, I get to do it again. I get to congratulate all of you now. Congratulations. It has been a pleasure for me to get to know each of you over this time. But please know that unlike other things in life, this is not an end. It is only a beginning. Now begins the journey of your discipleship. You are only preparing for it up until now. Now begins the hard work. May God be with you. May his spirit be upon you, and I congratulate all of you. <laughs> you take your seats. We come together as God's people, bringing our needs before him. For the church throughout the world, as we celebrate Christ's resurrection, may the Lord fill us with a renewed zeal for sharing the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For non-believers throughout the world, may the Holy Spirit enkindle in them a fire of love for the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alone or away from family and friends during this Easter season, may the love and compassion of our triune God bring them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are entering the church on this holy night, may God and the prayers of this community strengthen them on their journey of faith. Let us pray to the Lord, hear For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they live eternally with the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we ask that you hear and pay heed to these prayers we offer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power be brought, bring us to etern healing eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Santos, Santos, Santos Dominus Deus Amaud, Plei Sugelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, Qui Venit in Nomine Domini, Hosanna. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, 
granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ, our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
distress. He has answered and freed me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The nations all encircled me.
let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. After three days of very uh, beautiful liturgies and uh, hard work by a lot of people, it would be very unkind of me not to acknowledge a few people. I first want to uh, thank our uh, musicians, first of all, our director of music, Dr. Peter Kerschel, and our excellent choir, and all the musicians that he's brought in over the past three days that have helped our worship, so thank you very much. I also want to take this opportunity to uh, give a very big thank you to our Director of Worship, Justin Wiltsey, who does a lot of work behind the scenes and a lot of work not behind the scenes. Uh, but this beautiful church, which, yeah, maybe just a little bit over the top, maybe just a little bit, it, it is how we worship here, and we're so thankful that he helps us to do that. So thank you to him and the Art and Environment Committee as well for all their hard work over these past week, over this past week. <laughs> Liturgy going smoothly would not be possible without a director of worship, but even more impossible without excellent servers. And we're very lucky that our seminarians, three of them, are here with us over the whole week, and the other two are in their parishes for their internships. But all the other servers from the parish are very helpful, and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you. And finally, last but not least, and I'm not talking about myself, because um, I'm not least, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, our new deacon, Reverend Mr. Lawrence Dutler, has done yeoman's work, learning a lot of stuff over the last three days. He thought it was going to be easy being a deacon. He's come to realize it isn't. At least at the Basilica, it involves a lot of singing. So he's gotten really good at it. Next year, maybe even he'll tackle the exaltet. So we'll see. And then I'll have a break through the whole liturgy. So thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> Finally, the last uh, people that I need to thank, thank are our director of uh, our Basilica uh, Order of Christian Initiation of Adult program, Drew Anderson, and all of his team, which are listed here, and I won't name every single one of them, but thank you to all of you who helped to inspire faith in the people who desire to grow closer to the Lord here at the Basilica. We thank you very much for your hard work and for your commitment. It's not always easy, I know, and sometimes it's even a little frustrating, but thank you very much. God bless you all. And that concludes my sixth year of being here at the Basilica, but only my fifth year of doing the Easter Vigil, because I missed a whole year a few years ago. And I love being here, so thank you very much for all the opportunity that you all provide for us. By the way, like I said, to all of you who are new here, and this is your first time, we don't do anything small at the Basilica, okay? So if that's what you are looking for, go someplace else, okay? <laughs> Please stand. The Lord be with you. Oh, yes, yes. Bow down for the blessing. Almighty God, may Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. 
Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.